I'm not on TikTok, but I saw this TikTok trend that really highlighted the importance of paying attention to the way that we talk about issues and the way that we bring them up to one another. And you may have seen it, you may not have. Uh, I'm not sure how TikTok trends start and get uh, around the internet, but I saw this one on uh, Instagram and on YouTube. And it's basically this setup where uh, you carry your baby or toddler and you walk past the door and you whack the door or, or the wall with your hand and then you say, oh my goodness, what's going on? And then ostensibly they're trying to make the baby cry and think that they're hurt. And so this sort of whipped around and I saw it and I thought this is such an interesting insight uh, into human beings because some of the kids burst into tears. They're like, oh my goodness, my head. Oh, you know what? And, and the parents go, what's wrong? And they go, oh my head, you hit my, I hit my head. And they're crying and they're genuinely upset. It doesn't get all the kids. It gets some of them, but it doesn't get all of them. Some of the kids are like, mate, you banged your hand or um, I'm fine. What are you talking about? Nothing happened. And I think that's really telling because as humans, you know, we're social animals and we pay attention to the cues and the reactions of people around us to, to understand how we're supposed to react. When we're small, we take almost all our cues from, the, from older people, from the parents, from our extended families. And we're looking to them like, is there a lion? Is there something we should be worried about? Is the sky falling? What should we do? And so if parents or older people freak out, kids tend to freak out. And if parents and older people are kind of calm, the kids tend to be calm. And that's often because of the environment of trust. They trust the people that they're around. Uh, they have a limited circle of influence. They don't really know the environment they're in. Kids don't really know where they're at all the time. And the more foreign the environment, the more likely they are to have a freak out if they see some other people freaking out. And you like to think that we get over this as we get older. And in some respects we do. In some respects we absolutely sort of get over those things. I don't think anyone could pretend to bang my head and, and, I, would, and I would believe them. But the mechanisms which we take our cues from other people don't just disappear because we are social animals. It's why when you walk down the road and you see a bunch of people looking at stuff, everyone kind of still will have a bit of a look. They'll, they'll have a look, they'll go, oh yeah, okay, what's going on? If everyone's looking up, you look up. If everyone starts running down the street, you probably try and run away. And maybe not everyone would, but a lot of people would because we pick up on what's going on and we take our cues from other people. The more foreign the environment, and the more we trust the reactions of the people around us, the more we're likely to take on board some of those reactions. So it's someone I really trust in an environment I'm not familiar with and they say, mate, gotta go, run. I'm just turning around and running and I'm asking while we're going, I'm like, what's going on, what's going on? But I'd, I would just go, I would go for sure. And most of us would. The challenge with that is that the more vulnerable people, the people who, who have higher levels of anxiety, the people who are feeling more uncertain, the people who have less stability in their environment are more susceptible to taking on the emotions from someone else's heightened emotional state. And some people and some organizations take advantage of that. They take advantage of the fact that people mistake a heightened emotional state as being information they need to take on board right away. There are shock jocks who do this every day. We see it in newspaper headlines. We see it in people on the internet who scream and yell about things to hype everyone up and get them anxious and really wind people up. And for some people, just like the babies, for some people, who are highly susceptible to that sort of thing, it really affects them in a real way, just like the baby that's crying. It's really crying, it's genuinely upset. And other people walk past and go, no, that's not gonna do anything to me because that's ridiculous. Um, so I don't know what everyone's so upset about. The challenge that has been laid on top of this whole mechanism is that there is a kind of school of thought or, or sort of popular school of thought that that level of intensity of emotion somehow translates also to how much someone cares about something. And we need to really move away from that if we wanna protect people from the negative impacts of people taking advantage of that heightened emotional response and using it to manipulate and extract uh, emotions out of people to get what they want. And the reason that we can't uh, confuse a heightened emotional state or you know moment of intensity with care is pretty simple it's because you can pretend you can pretend you can pretend to have a heightened emotional state you can put it on you can be outraged about anything and if you listen to talk back radio there is no shortage of outrage somehow every day 365 days a year they're able to be outraged about something and the outrage taps into someone else's anxiety, they get outraged or feel outraged. Maybe they didn't before, maybe they had a hint of sort of discontent that's now being really amped up by this person's reaction, and now they're like, yeah, 
I'm also upset or I'm also sad or I'm also scared. And that is literally just being taken advantage of by those people, it's being taken advantage of by people on the internet, it's being taken advantage of by newspaper headlines. These things are all designed to whip people up and it works best on vulnerable people. The things that can affect you are the environment that you're in, uh, the vulnerability that you're feeling and the trust that you have in the, in the people that are uh, having this reaction. So if I'm in a foreign environment and I'm feeling quite vulnerable and someone I trust is having a, an intense reaction, I'm more likely to be like, oh my goodness, what are we doing? What's the thing? What's happening? And take it on board. When I'm in a really comfortable environment, I really know what's going on and someone I don't trust or know is freaking out, that's not really great ingredients to make me freak out. I'd be like, okay, everything's fine. I know because I know where I am. You're having a freak out. Let's just see what we can do about that. Care is not about an intense reaction to something. Care is about showing up and putting in work and doing the things and consistently caring about something through your actions for a really long time. The longer the better. There's no shortcut to being a doctor that you can take that just involves whether or not you can get really upset about something in a short period of time. You have to put the time in. And if you think it's easy to pretend to do something or pretend to care about something for a long time when you're continuing to show up and do things every day, I just ask you to think about the last time you tried to do a diet where there was food you didn't enjoy or um, do a gym program or training program where you didn't really enjoy the stuff you were doing. If you didn't care about it, it's very hard to stick to. And so you can't really pretend that you care. You can pretend when you're having drinks with someone, be like, oh, I totally care, I care heaps about it. But if we audit your behavior and what you've been shown to care about for a long time, it doesn't show up. And so I could get excited, I could raise my emotional state right now about something. Oh, I spilled my ice cream, I'm furious. Oh, I hate x-rays, x-rays are no good. Whatever it is. And none of that means that I actually genuinely care about it what I'm screaming about. It just means that I'm able to get amped up about it. My concern is the most vulnerable people are the most susceptible to these kinds of heightened emotional states and it has the biggest negative impact on them. And that's something we need to protect people from. We don't need to protect people from frustration and from genuinely having an emotional response to something because we should embrace that, it's all part of being human. What we need to be on guard against is people who use a performative heightened emotional state to try and get other people into an anxious and heightened emotional state to then get them to do something or you know, advocate for something or whatever it is, be more susceptible to being taken advantage of, whatever that looks like. We need to be wary of those people because that is a real danger to people who are, have mental health vulnerabilities, financial vulnerabilities, whose businesses are at risk, whose organizations are at risk, whose communities are at risk. Those people who are genuinely at risk and genuinely have issues and genuinely are anxious are more susceptible to that heightened emotional manipulation and that's not okay. Whereas if we've got people that really care and they keep showing up and say, listen, I've been doing this for 10 years, I've been doing this for 15 years, I've been doing this for 25 years, and they say, guys, this is what we think we should do, people go, this person doesn't look like they care enough because the other person I saw screaming was obviously cared about it more because they were screaming despite the fact they've never engaged in this space or in this problem or in this sort of environment ever before in their life and we're confusing that heightened emotional state with care in both directions. We need to protect each other from those things. We need to pay attention to the people that care. We need to pay attention to expertise. It's really important that we keep rewarding the guys who show up, that we look after the people who are trying to keep a level head and advocate for good outcomes for everybody and not confuse screaming and yelling with care and to pay attention to who's been doing what for a long time so that we know who to ask. That's why it's so important that we have epidemiologists and virologists and doctors and public health officials and nurses and infrastructure around all those things and people have been working on those problems for decades. Doing all of these things, these really important things for everyone, these really important things to improve that equality of opportunity. And we need to be on guard in this particularly volatile and anxious and uncertain times, we need to be on guard against the people who are able to take advantage of that using this sort of mechanism of bang, oh, how's your head? Oh my goodness, what's, what's wrong with my head? What's going on, what's going on? And if you're one of those people who's not affected by that, fantastic, keep an eye out for people that are. And if you are one of those people that's affected by that, first of all, it's not a terrible thing, you know, it, it's, just, it's just the way it is. But be aware that taking in intensity is not necessarily the best way to help you navigate a challenging time. Huge 
catastrophizing statistics and things like that aren't good. People telling you that everything is everything is a lie and everything is ruined and no one cares is not true for a start and it doesn't help anyone. Who, who does it help to, to spread a message like that? And people calling people names and doing these things, it doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help anybody to separate ourselves out like that and try and ram that division through the middle of people based on an intensity that's got nothing to do with whether or not people actually care about you or, or about uh, how to solve the problems that we're currently facing or whether they've got a vested interest in solving them or perhaps maybe a vested interest in keeping them going a little bit longer. So I thought it was interesting. I just thought the TikTok thing was an interesting sort of demonstration of that. As social animals, it's something we have to be on the lookout for. It's something we need to be wary of. So keep looking out for one another. Don't mistake intensity for care. Mistake care for people who show up and have got time in and been doing things for a long time. People who show it through their actions. Um, keep showing up for one another. Support your friends who are anxious. Look after people's mental health. Advocate for better assistance from the government in the form of bringing back JobKeeper and a broader, more extensive job seeker and eviction moratoriums and support for small businesses uh, who are also doing it so tough and, and navigating these lockdowns in and out and in and out. It's, it is incredibly frustrating. We can't deny the frustration that we're all feeling, but we have to acknowledge that uh, catastrophizing is not the way to bring people along, help people out or make people feel better and that we need to be solutions focused, community focused, look after each other, show up for one another and as always, just be nice. <laughs>